The views of the guest are that of the guests and do not represent nor reflect the views and opinions of the Lockout Men channel, the recruiter call channel, nor its host. This site content is for entertainment, educational, and informational purposes only. Yeah, well, I can recognize your voice, so I know it ain't a scam. Nah, nah, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't that, my guy. It ain't that. All right. Um, for the purpose of the co of podcast, man, look, I want to put them out of business. That's what I want to do with Super Ego. That that's my purpose. I want to tell my story, but ultimately, beyond that, I want them people out of business, man. They do not need to be in trucking. They are a cancer. For drivers, what happened to me, what happened to that lady, and probably many other ones that you have spoken to about controversial um, super ego. They don't need to be in business. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Today's episode is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. More on them later. Let's let's go ahead and get you in, man. Paris in the building. So, I, I came across you from one of the Facebook groups that uh, that I'm a part of, mm -hmm. and uh, and one of the contributors linked me to a post that you made inside of the group, and they was like, "Hey, mm -hmm. lockout! This guy right here sounds like a, sounds like a good story that you you could spotlight." And I was like, "Oh, okay." So mm -hmm. while we we're talking, we're in the we're going conversing back and forth in the group. You happen to pop up in our in our link. So I appreciate that, bro. So for starters, uh, before you tell your story and everything, because you, you didn't actually mention the company, controversial company, but is is that the company you're you're referring to as far as them treating you bad? Yes, sir. It is super ego. Okay. Okay. Well, what's what's your story with them? Um prior to super ego, I was with another leasing company that was uh, MS 89, I believe. And it was like two weeks prior to them. And the little details about it is a little bit different. And I will share that with, you know, the public, uh, MS 89, um, sold me a truck or leased me a truck that was not working properly. There was transmission problems. And I kept telling them like for five or six, seven, eight times about this, took pictures, everything still have the evidence. Well, a breakdown happened in, uh, Tennessee, which was Nashville. And after that breakdown, them guys left me down there pretty much stranded for over a whole week. Something that was due to their fault and their error. And I corrected it and got that load finally delivered. But I asked them for compensation for my time loss and for what it cost me to be down there for that week. I slept in that truck every day on the side of the highway, uh, pretty well on the side of the street. So what I told them which is what I didn't tell Super Ego. Um, after I calculated my time, what they cost me for that load, and not getting that truck back on time, I said, you owe me my, you owe me $1,200. And if you don't pay me that, I'm going to take this truck apart. And I was able to get the truck back home in front of my front yard, and I don't care who would have came, who would have saw it. If you don't pay me, I'm going to take this truck apart. Well, they wind up... Um, trying to threaten me, telling me they was going to call the cops and this and that and the other. And I just told them simple as this, I don't care who you call. So they made me an offer. And the offer was is that we'll give you half and then the other half when you return this truck to Chicago. I'm like, I don't negotiate with terrorists. That's what I told them. You pay me all my money or you're not going to get this truck. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm dismantle it for my money. So they wind up sending me $1,200, which was in uh, two checks. And uh, I cashed that check for $300. And then the other one later on, I could clear it for $300 and I got my money. So that was my first experience with leasing. I had been in trucking for the last four years. I went to Old uh, Zork uh, Driving Institute, which is in Kabul, Missouri. And then I graduated and I had my, my CDL over a little bit over four and a half months. I mean, uh, four and a half years. So finally, they paid it off. I don't know nothing about Super Ego. I don't have no, these people called me and they said that I was approved for uh, a truck. I had no business with them. I had applied for no application, no nothing. I just got a call. And so right after that had happened, being that I have to return this call, uh, truck back to Chicago, I followed up on their offer, meaning that I can come there and get another truck and this and that and the other. So I dropped that truck off and those guys came and got me. They, well, they sent the Uber over to get me and pick me up. And I left that truck at the pilot and then I went on with the super ego agent. And then we went through the process. All right. So it, it was probably easier for, for a super ego to do that being that they're both companies is in Illinois. 
So it was easy for them to send the Uber over to you to where you was at to bring you over to them to do the onboarding. But you just mentioned that the check was $1,200. You mentioned you got two of them. I just want to make sure if you're corrected in saying, instead of saying the three, you got two $600 checks and not two $300 checks. No, one was for nine hundred, and the other one was for three hundred. Oh, okay, and, okay, 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 okay. And the reason why it wasn't all in one piece, um, with that particular uh, process, when I went down to the love station to cash that check, it was by EFS. Well, it didn't clear the second one, meaning the three hundred dollar one. So I called them back up, like, "Look, if y'all don't pay me my money, I'm taking this truck back home again, and I'm going to do what I got to do." Well, they pleaded with me, and and you know, told me, "Look, Mr. Taylor, it's a mistake. What we have here is that um, we only have a certain amount of limit of EFS checks that can be made during the day. So I had to wait until twelve midnight to cash that other check, which was for three hundred. Okay, so they, they buckled and just went on ahead and said, "Well, let's go ahead and." Get this man out the way yeah. so we won't have a problem. Yeah, they, they pretty much. Yeah, they went on ahead and paid me. They went on ahead and paid me, man. And okay. I was only extreme about that, man, because I got bills to pay. I got things right. like that. I was being honest. I knew right. nothing that happened was because of my doing and this and the other. And I sat down there for over a week with that former company, not Super Ego. So now I'm having experience with a leasing company before Super Ego. I mean, it was only two. They, they happened within a matter of weeks from each other. So I threatened that first one, like, man, if you don't do this, this is what I'm going to do. Right. I never threatened Super Ego. I never threatened them. Okay. Because I already knew after all the conversations that I had with them and everything that I went through with Super Ego and trying to talk to the dispatchers, the agents, and the representatives, and they was just basically telling me this offer that was ridiculous. Mr. Taylor, all we can do is um, reduce your um, lease payments and get you better paying loads, and then you need to keep on. I'm like, no, man, you need to pay me what you owe me now. It happened this week. It happened on your watch. You caused it, and so forth and so forth. I never threatened them about taking their truck apart or nothing. I'd already had prior experience to know I can do it. So everything happened in a matter of uh, over a span of a week from you leaving exactly. MS, in a, a MS89 and then coming over to a controversial company. But when you but right. when you MN89, got MN89, I believe. M, oh, okay. MN89. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. But coming over to no, cool. a controversial company, you said you didn't do any research on them. So you only went by what they told you over the phone, right? The research that I've done on them was very little because of the trans, um, the way that things process. Like I told you, they called me. I had no knowledge about them whatsoever. All they told me was that I was approved. And then the details that was worked out within that couple of days was about me getting to Illinois and they would pay for the ticket and fly me up there and so forth. I did do some previous reviews about it, but by that time, I'm already engaged with them while I'm reading these reviews. You know, and some of those reviews were controversial, and then there were some that were good. And then I also had a homeboy that told me, like, hey, man, this is what these guys are doing, which is pretty good. And then I said, man, I'm going to go find out. I got to go up there anyway because I got to deliver this truck back. So I'm not going to just go on what somebody else said and take it word of mouth. It's just like it was, you know, with a neighbor or somebody that talks bad about you. You know, it's different when you actually confront the person and give them an opportunity, to, you know, themselves to say what they're about. And, what, and I wanted to do that. I'm not going to sit up there and read like every single review about somebody that's talking about somebody that's bad, 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 bad. And then I'm just going that and then I miss out on an opportunity. Mm. No, I just read several of them. I'm like, okay, man, I'm going to give these people a fair chance and go up there and see for myself what they're about. So you get there and what happened? Why did everything go south? Well, when I got and I took the other truck over to um, the pilot, which was with the former company, MN89, um, they came and arrived in the Uber like maybe about 30 minutes later. And they shuttled me over there. And when I got over there, the building is... Um, pretty much pretty flat, you know, classy. They have their clerks there, you know, they have their staff, they have a yard, you know, everything was pretty open and it's pretty busy and buzzy. And there was more than just, you know, other drivers that was being recruited there that, you know, that um, were ahead of me. And so going through that process, you know, I was greeted, I came in, it was like going into a car dealership. Hold on. Looking for the perfect wallet, meet the Ridge 
With thousands of colors and styles, there's a ridge for everyone. It is designed for everyday use, keeping your essentials organized without the bulk. Whether you prefer the classic look or the bold look, you'll find a Ridge wallet that fits your style. Crafted with durable materials, the Ridge wallet is built to last with its FRID blocking technology, ensures your cards are safe, making it the perfect on-the-go lifestyle. Upgrade from your dad wallet to your new everyday carry. Discover the perfect match at RidgeWallet.com. Embrace your style, functionality, and security. And don't forget, when you head over to the RidgeWallet.com to make your first order, make sure you use my promo code YouTube10. With that, you would get 10% off your first Ridge Wallet. Thank you, Ridge Wallet, for sponsoring today's episode. And I sat down with them and they talked to me about, you know, the offers and this and the other. I never even met the recruiter that really even got me there in the first place. I never met him. And there were several ladies that were processing things and uh, talking about what, you know, how it works. And what I was like misled about from the first beginning is that they told me that I was going to be able to actually come and pick out the truck that I wanted to lease. So while I'm sitting there, you know, waiting for the process of um, doing paperwork to go through, uh, they asked me at a certain point, would you like to come out here and look at the trucks that we got? So the fleet manager, he came and got me, took me outside and said that he had these trucks available, which was two. One was an international, which, oh man, it was in the worst shape. It didn't have no seats, didn't have no steering wheel. And he was talking about, well, it needed to go to the shop and they could fix it up. And the other one was a 2024 Peterbilt. Uh, yeah, Peterbilt. It was brand new. I mean, smacking brand new. Didn't have no miles on it really hard or nothing. So now I'm interested in this truck. And so... He's telling me to go ahead and, yeah, he's telling me to go ahead and take pictures, do my inspection on it. And while he's, you know, over there talking and I'm doing all that, about 10 minutes later, he comes back out and tells me that he can't even sell me that truck. Um, I'm like, well, why not? You know, I'm trying to make some controversy about that then. I want this truck right here. Well, sir, I can't sell it to you. I can't do this. I can't do that. This guy, after that, took me over here and shows me a 2000, I think it was a 2019 or 18 Volvo truck. It was littered. It had garbage in it. It had all this stuff in it. And I'm like, man, I don't want it. And they actually tried to get me to accept the truck that they're offering. Me. There was a lot more other trucks on that yard that looked in a lot more better conditions than the one that they even showed me. That was the first red flag. But because I'm in Chicago, I'm already up there. I got to get employed. I need to pay bills. I got to work. I uh, went back into the office, which they told me to. And then another representative, he came back and talked to me and said that he had a truck that was in the shop right there that was being um, completed to be done in about another 30 minutes or so. So when that shop, when, when, when that truck was offered to me and I looked at it, I'm like, no, I don't want it. So now um, it wasn't accepted. I had some controversies with them. So that was, I'm like, look, I'm supposed to be able to come here and pick my own truck out, and y'all not even doing that. Y'all trying to give me the trucks that y'all want to give me. I want a truck. I want a good one. And I told him, I said, if you want the best driver, you give me the best truck because I'm the best driver. What I want to say is, is that you now realizing of all of the bad condition trucks mm -hmm. that, that that's there on the lot that they want you guys to pick out from, you do realize right. those are from previous drivers that probably had the same issues as other drivers there you bringing their trucks back because a lot of the trucks that come back don't come back in a good condition after they get recovered. I didn't like put two and two and two together that that was actually what you said like it was. You know, and I had maybe thought about it, but I didn't want looking like, OK, you know, somebody's actually out here capable of doing what I did, like literally taking yeah. the truck apart. No, it, it, that didn't occur to me at that time. It didn't. No, it didn't. Yeah, they have a recovery team. And yeah, I got I, I talked to a recovery driver and he sent me pictures of how mm -hmm. they, of how these drivers leave the conditions of these trucks after these drivers either abandon it or right. do what they need to do to right. get sated. And right. 
those are the same trucks that they bringing back to the yard and and they repurpose reuse recycle but they just want to let you guys get in there and look at it first like hey we got we got this one that don't have a steering wheel but give us a day or two we'll put one in there for you You know right. and so right. you it, it's like right. It's it's like the old saying goes, like you know, when when people go buy used cars, they be like, well, you you mm -hmm. buying other people's problems. So mm -hmm. once you starting to realize all of that, what's what's going through your head now? Are you still uh, are you no, just no. there? To clarify, you know, to clarify what you just said, which is 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 correct. There's nothing inaccurate about that. What what needs to be clarified is is that even on that same yard, there are new trucks. There are good looking trucks. Every truck on there was not raggedy. Everyone, you know, and they didn't even show me all of them. They had new trucks there. They had trucks that were not destroyed and everything else. They just didn't give me the opportunity to pick one out that I, you know, that I really wanted and this and that and the other. And yes, there were a lot of damaged trucks there, like several, even the ones that I'm telling you about, the International, the Volvo, and so forth. In other words, again, they were just trying to give me what it seems like anything that they seemed that they could push off on me at, at first. Was I thinking about other drivers and, you know, taking trucks apart or removing? No, that, that didn't even go to my mind. I'm like, man, I ain't, I'm not just not going to be a sucker for going for a truck. Then when you advertise and on your advertisement, after I looked at it, say that you can come and pick the truck out you want between um, 2020 and 2025. So anyway, we went on through this process and um, I wound up at this other location that they had from the one that I was at there. The truck wasn't there. They had to put me in a hotel room, which they provided. They flew me out there from Missouri, which is um, Springfield, Missouri. And I got there, and then that process of what I'm talking about took place. But then because things are, you know, being controversial about, man, the truck that I want and not want and me not going for this and this and that, and the fact that I didn't have my uh, full Social Security on hand, my full Social Security card, that took a little bit of a process. So now I'm here. Man, I was there for a whole week from, like, Monday to Friday before I seen this truck. And then the guy comes back, the fleet manager, which was a young guy, and he offers me a 2000, that's a 2025 um, Freightliner Cascadia, which was the truck I took apart. Um, he made me this offer after like a couple of days later. Like this guy's in the motel, this and the other, this is what we got. And I'm like excited now. This is a 2025, had 27,000 miles on it. I'm like, yeah, as long as I ain't got to worry about no brake issues, I'm ready to roll. Now that was what's going on in my mind. In between time, yes, I had listened to drivers, I had seen reviews and everything else that I'm now becoming aware of while I'm being housed in the motel by them. Me and other drivers is now talking about it. Man, should we go in through it? Should we go in the other? Whoop the whoop and back and forth. Hold on. What's going on, guys? I just want to stop the video right here right quick. If you guys made it this far into the video and you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that like button for me, bro. Hit that like button. It's free. It's free. If you made it this far into the video, man, make sure you hit that like button. It's right up under the video, man. And if you guys like more content like this, consider okay y'all got two options well one but two options you can either subscribe for the channel for more and if you really want to rock with me and get the videos early make sure you join join the channel all right shout outs to all my members of the channel that rocks with your man thank you very much now let's get back to the show and so finally this truck the 2025 Freightliner was not even on the yard, not even in the, in, in the location. It was 90, 80 miles away. And they sent me over to the Uber to the body shop to go recover that truck. They didn't pay me or nothing. They just sent me in an Uber. I went over there. That truck was sitting out front, no trailer, no nothing. And uh, it had um, the side panel on it that had been custom made on it. But otherwise than that, it was a legitimate 2025 truck. So I'm ready to move. I'm ready to go ahead and make my loads, you know, and it didn't have no license place on it. The tag that was on it had already expired. They had to send me that through my Gmail um, in order to be able to have some kind of tags on the truck, which I wound up um, getting processed through uh, some loves or something like that, which uh, gave me the uh, the copy. And then I put that, you know, in the, in the dash. And so I drove the truck. So that 
Friday, when I picked that truck up, I'm ready to move. They scheduled me for loads or gave me a load. And that load went from one place to another, which I think it was uh, Arkansas. So now I'm driving the truck. There was nothing wrong with the truck at all. But the dispatching, everything that they caused, my first check from them um, and my first loads from them that they booked got canceled like twice. It cost me in time. I was in the, uh, Nebraska the first time, and the shipper's telling me, we're not going to load you. These were loads that Super Ego dispatchers gave me. So then I'm being misdispatched on certain loads. I'm, I'm like losing money like right off the top. So I'm complaining about that. Like, man, why is this happening? Why are these loads being canceled? This is for another. Why am I being held up at these shippers? I was very professional. I didn't talk to the shippers crazy or nothing. I was talking to Super Eagle. Like, y'all need to call these people and get this resolved, get this done so that we can make some money. So that load was canceled. And then I went on another load and I finally made it back to Missouri, where I was from. They was to get, you know, some things from my house and this and the other to keep on trucking. And it basically kept being the same pattern for the three weeks that I was there. My first check after that was for $125, I think was the first check that I got from them. That was after all deductions was made and this and the other, which I didn't complain about. The thing that I was complaining about with them even then was that, what about the time you cost me? What about sending it to that shipper over there that you just mis dispatched me from? What about your dispatcher that's left me hanging and just went home on that Friday and don't nobody in this company know anything about anything and I'm just sitting there waiting on them to dispatch me alone? What about that? So the, re the uh, result of that and the solution for them was to get me another dispatcher who was worse than the first one, costing me time, costing me money, and this and any other just being simply misdispatched. Loads. Fuel. How many dispatchers you went through uh, doing this course? Three. I went through three. I was there for three weeks, so it was about three of them. Wow. And yeah, and 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 so this this happened like right off the top. So I went on ahead, man, and like I told him because I'm like that. I'm like I normally don't get rid of dispatchers. If I got a disagreement with you, I don't you know like you with man. Fine, we can do this all day long. And so it was not my normal norm to say, man, give me another one. This man, That was new to me. But I had to because this dude was costing me too much money. And they made that suggestion, not me. Like, man, this dude was going back and forth about it. You know, like, man, you're you doing this, you're doing that. I know, but I'm going to make it up and, and so forth and so forth. But in the end, it wasn't me that said, man, I want to fire you. I, don't, I want a different dispatcher. They suggested that. So I rolled with another one, just about one for every week that I was there. So what I, um, part of my story is about that particular thing is that they're costing me gross, man. They're costing me thousands and thousands of dollars that I know I'm going to be making or should be making. And when I seen that $125 check, which was the first one that finally cleared because they keep you in the hole for two weeks. You don't even get your first check or nothing. So I went running for almost two weeks without even seeing a check because I know that I, got, I need to be trucking, I need to be working. And then finally, when I delivered those loads, everything wasn't on time, didn't miss nothing. They gave me that 125 check based on the deductions that was made. Didn't complain. I'm like, okay, this is my first one. Let me keep on trucking. Let me get some bigger money. Even though it was bad dispatching, and even though that dispatcher left me, went home for the weekend and caused me to almost be in the red the first time. So the second time, it was even worse. I, I can't even gross nothing because the way that they dispatching me, I can't make no money. So I'm complaining to them like, look, this is what it is. This is how much money I'm losing. This is how much time I'm doing. This is what your company, I don't care about what you're talking about, the broker or the receiver or the shipper. It has nothing to do with them. It's you guys. And the way that y'all are giving this me this dispatcher to where I'm losing my income. I say, I'm adding it up and I'm looking at it and I should be if I can't, if I can't get paid and I'm not grossing, then then how am I gonna pay you? How am I gonna pay you? You get your um, what was that, fifteen, twelve uh, percent, and then y'all good, y'all y'all good. But then what about me and all this other money on gross that I should be making and everything else? They get they cut off top. Exactly. All these companies, all these ten ninety nine right, companies, exactly. all these quote unquote right. lease purchase company. Yeah, they gonna they gonna make sure they get theirs off top. You, they, they're gonna. Mm -hmm. They they don't care about about your end. They 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 care about mm -hmm. their end. When they when they broker the load, they're gonna make sure they get the cut right off right off the top. 
And then whatever else that's Absolutely. left over is, is, is going to come over to you. And then when it's time to come over to you, that's, that's where you're running into problems. Right, exactly. I mean, I'm agreeing with you totally. There's no dispute about that. But this is my first experience when understanding the advantage and the disadvantage that it was putting me in. You know, I, I can see that they get theirs off the top. I mean, like the second load and everything. I'm like, man, this is what's happening here. They get theirs and then I'm left and they don't care about me grossing anything after that or any higher than that. But I'm pinpointing it. I'm documenting it. I know the amount of time that I'm spending to these shippers. I know the amount of time that, you know, it's taking me from going from one load to the other. I'm not being paid by the mile like I normally would as an independent contractor. I'm being paid off the gross that I can make as a driver, as an owner operator. And like I explained to those dispatchers and to the representatives and to the safety departments and this and that and the other, I explained this point to them, you are costing me money. You are negligent. You are costing me a liability. And I should sue you. And I can sue you. Don't be trying to sit up and uh, look at me like my time is not valuable. That, oh, that's just trucking. You just got to accept that as a loss that you were just sitting there. Even though you are the very person that put me in the position to be there in the first place where I'm not doing anything. Because if it was any way or shape or form that I thought that it's the shippers costing me or the receiver costing me, believe me, I'm going to tell them the same thing I'm telling you. So I probably identified, you know, my loss and what it was costing me. And they just was negligent and disrespectful and manipulative to want to accept that, to want to even admit it. Well, well, they did admit it. Well, you know, we did do this, and this is how we're going to try to correct it. We're going to give you a new dispatcher, this and that, and that. But to try to give, give you a monetary value back for it, like pay you in real time, like when it happened, like go on your paycheck and what they should restore you? No. They have this manipulative scheme, you know, which is based on some kind of Ponzi or whatever, or those people are on that, that are on that part of the totem pole couldn't make any changes. And I asked them, I said, let me talk to somebody else other than you because we just going around and around and around on this phone right here. Give me somebody else to talk to. I want somebody that can make the changes and make my paycheck be what it needs to be right now when I get paid on Friday. So anyway, the continuation with the story is this. I, I, I continue to go on um, because I'm under loads. And I want to clarify that. And being under a load is different than being empty. And I have to deliver that load because that load has nothing to do with the issues that I have with Super Ego. I have to resolve that issue once I get the load delivered. So I delivered my load, which was the last one, which was down in Ellabella, Georgia, after leaving from New Jersey. I had already had in mind what I was going to do, when, you know, which was to get home. Once I seen that I was not going to be paid what I asked for, which they told me. They told me the solution was they was going to try to reduce my rates for the next um, lease payment and that they would give me higher paying loads. That was their offer. Let me say that again. One, they offered to reduce my lease payments. My lease payment for that truck was seven fifty plus the deductions and then plus the escrow. So it totaled an amount of probably about, uh, I think it was like fourteen to $1,800, somewhere in there that I was paying weekly from what they got. Well, they wanted to make a reduction in the lease payment payments in order to compensate me for what they was costing. And then the other offer was the promise to give me higher paying loads the, the next week and put me on their best runs or whatever they was talking about. And I got my mama sitting here. I said, mom, you hear this here? My mom's sitting in the living room. <laughs> mom is looking at me like, baby, no. And I'm like, look, pay me this amount right here, which is what you owe me. Uh, I'm asking for 2500 even though I know it's something like four grand that y'all owe me. Pay me that. They didn't want to do it. They wanted to give me that offer that they wanted. And then, I, you know, I had no business in it to discuss with them after that. So finally, what happened was, and, and, I, and I want this to be clearly understood, once I got home, I had to rest. And I came back the next day. And I decided, I said, well, if they want to trade my paycheck, meaning what they owe me, that little $1,200, $1,400, and, and, and not pay me my back payments for my gross money, I said, well, I accept that. This is a new 2025 Freightliner. And so I, myself, went and began to take the parts off the truck in order to recover the money that was owed. I had nothing else to go on. I had bills that's due, like right then and there. I didn't feel like I needed to go hide and be a thief or 
you know, uh, somewhere and sneaking. I did it right in my front yard. It's a walkaway lease. And just like they said on some of your other podcasts, and they, they want you to leave it somewhere, abandon it somewhere, and, and you know, something. Cr- no, I took it home. It's my truck. I'm going to take it home. So I began to dismantle it piece by piece, alternator, uh, blower, um, and whatever else that I could get off from it. And the, 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 the reason why I didn't take more parts off was because I didn't have the tools to do it. And then finally, I got enough parts to where I needed for my bills and my payments. And that's how they went. And the police came by, and the sheriffs in my town watching me while I'm doing it. I wasn't afraid of their taxes or nothing. And so um, how the recovery was made is that it took about 10 days for them to come get it. It's in my front yard. And my niece is pregnant, and we're sitting up here in the house where I am right now, and she noticed that it was a tow truck that came by. And then I got up and looked out of the window and realized that it was going around the corner. Let me make sure this battery don't work. All right. And so they came in, um, the tow truck, the recovery guy. This was, uh, I think it was out of the um, Mount Grove area or Mount View area. And uh, the guy, there was two of them, they got out, they looked at the truck, they scratched their chins, they scratched their head, they got on the phone. And then um, the next thing I know, um, Houston's finest, Houston, Missouri, sheriff showed up and they turned the cherries on, on the back of the truck. <laughs> behind the truck. And uh, they talked for a few minutes. They never talked to me. They never came to my house. They just took pictures. And after the pictures was taken, they looked at everything. The truck was out of there and like 40 minutes later, they just hauled it off and left. So um, I put my story out there about what I did in order to compensate for the losses that happened to me and the damage that was done to me on Facebook. I began to post. I didn't know nothing about really other drivers and what they did, you know, to, uh, resolve the issues with them or not that group which was a uh, cdl drivers looking for work um i'm like posting things on there about what i did but i'm also posting that i want a job you know like i'm trying to continue trucking and uh it was controversial for the first few days you know comments here comments there reviews this that and the other and back and forth it went and uh you know some people wanted me in jail some people said i was a legend you know i really don't care what i want is to put these people out of business they ain't got no business in trucking. I understand they're paying taxes. I understand they're getting capital gains. But I also understand, man, they didn't destroy my life. They didn't destroy my life. I mean, it, it, it's hard. Yeah, I got bills to pay this, that, and the other. They didn't destroy me. You wasn't going to let them destroy you, man. And that's... No. That's a hell, no. That's a hell of a story, bro. And all of this within the span of three weeks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In three weeks. What would you say to people that uh, would say... Hey, bro, you you only gave them three weeks. Why you just didn't turn around? Maybe you did something wrong. You didn't do it right. Uh, you came in with a different mindset. What, what do you say to those people that 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 comes in to, to try to chop your story down, man? What would you say to what would you say to them? Um, for number one, for three weeks, like I said, my my last check. Let me clarify that was eighty two dollars. I still have another check that they ain't, they ain't paid me for. That last loan and El, El Bell and everything before all that, they never paid me for that. My first one was for $125. My second one was for 400 and something that they gave me, which was pretty fair. Even though, and I, and I mean it, I'm not trying to give no credibility or nothing, but they still cost me, I should have had a whole lot more than that 460 bucks because of they missed dispatching and this and that and the other. Why did I accept that? It's because of the same reason that uh, Calissa was talking about in her podcast with you. I got to make money. I got a niece that's pregnant. I got a 75-year-old mother that, you know, I'm taking care of here in Houston. I got to have some kind of income. Now, and, and this is my first lease or second lease experience. I got to keep going. I got to try to get to some kind of position that either gives me some kind of advantage, which I never did. That's the reason why. I mean, there's no reason. I mean, this is not the same type of trucking that we're dealing with based on old school days. You know, like you don't abandon the truck. You don't leave it. You know, that old school thing that they got and enforced because of the values of this. This is new in what's going on. This is 2024. And if somebody's mistreating you, your car, your vehicle, your house, man, you got every right to walk away from it. I don't care where it is. If it's mistreating you, leave it. You ain't got to blow it up. You ain't got to do that. But man, leave the situation. But in trucking, the value and some of the values from that old school is that like, you know, well, if you do that, you didn't done the worst thing possible. 
If you tear up the equipment, you didn't done. No, man, all that's covered by insurance. All that's covered by the tax write off. I didn't hurt them people a pinch. I didn't hurt them a pinch, man. It ain't going to cost them a dime. And But you still had the controversial opinions about, hey, you still deal with you. You a bigger criminal than them. How? How am I a bigger criminal than them, man? When they tried and making attempts to ruin my life financially, and I just had figure out something common sense to do. Like, well, man, I'll just take the alternator off. That's about 300. Or I'll take this off. About it. You know, and so forth it goes. I don't see anything else that's working that's making these drivers being able to recover in a speedy way in which, you know, they need the money for what they're doing. These people is calculating this. They already know that they got time to do what they're doing and what they're doing to do what they're doing. And they don't care about our pain, our suffering, our families, our values, and they don't even really even care about their truck. That's why they say you can just walk away and leave it somewhere. They don't care about the driver or the truck. So you guys out here that seem to make them think like that, like that's their truck that I tore up. Like that's, the, man, look, man, I don't get down, man, trucks took care of me. For four years, I ain't never had a wreck. I ain't never had a bad crash or nothing. I love them. But I'd be damned if I sit up, man, and let somebody rob me for my paycheck. And I made a, you know, an agreement with you that as a driver, that, hey, man, this is what I will do and this is what you do. And then you wind up doing this to me and you don't want to take no liability for it. Well, all I got left is what you gave me. And so that's what I would say as a rebuttal to my story, man. I'm not here to defend, um, you know, what I did. I accept what I did. I don't regret it one penny. But they don't have any feelings about, and even to this day, I ain't got no notices from them. I ain't, they ain't talk to me. They ain't talking about pressing charges. I ain't had no police come over here because it, 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 it's true. They have it worked out in such a way to where they can write it off. Like, man, he ain't really did nothing. So you tell me, you know. You well, you did what you need to do to, to, to compensate yourself. And like I said, they, they sent their recovery team out there to get that same as that truck. They're going to take it right back to the yard. And then some other Joe Schmo that's going to come up in there looking for looking for an opportunity. Right. They're going to talk him right into that truck that they just got from right. you. And the cycle is just right. keep repeating over and over and over again. So, but hey, I'm I'm glad that you that you came on yeah. and uh, shared your story with us, man. Well, that's that's what this channel is all about. People come Ten on four. and they yeah. they they share their stories, whether it's good or bad or indifferent. But it all, it's also serves as a purpose of other people that's, that probably might be looking at controversial company Super Eagle as well. They right. want to, they coming in, right. they seeing that they calling them up and they selling them a dream and all like that. And they'll come across the channel and they see real mm. people talking about real experience with, with the company, man. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing. Yeah, I had no idea, man, about your company or anything about this podcast or nothing. Like I said, you know, I had no knowledge about this was to this extent as far as what super controversial Super Eagle had been doing like that. I didn't have no idea. But my voice, man, is is, is, is real. My voice is the truth of the matter is that, man, I'm not trying to sit up and twist something into some kind of scheme to get something out of it, man. I want them people out of business. You know, they want me out of business as a driver. I want them out of business as a corporation and everything they stand for. And about the best way to go about doing that is to put a halt to those trucks. And when we start taking them apart, piece by piece, eventually that'll happen because ain't nobody going to be driving them. And they ain't going to just be walking away broke, ain't got no money in their pocket, and then going home, you know, trying to figure out what they're going to do next. I appreciate you having me on this kind of podcast and everything. Hey, so I can get my voice out there about, you know, what exactly do happen. I, in fact, I'm not trying to stop drivers from going to Super Ego. I want them to go drive and get them trucks and then take them apart. That's, that's what I'm suggesting.